Photosynthesis is an incredibly remarkable process that allows the survival of countless organisms on this planet. The most notable of the beings that utilise photosynthesis are the plants, however other organisms are known to use it too, for example certain bacteria. Even some animals have this process happening in them too, such as with corals that are home to algae and, even more unusually, a species of salamander with a photosynthetic organism taking residence inside its cells. The spotted salamander, Ambystoma maculatum, is a small animal native to the eastern US and Canada, easily recognisable due to the two rows of orangey-yellow spots that run along their backs and their usually dark coloration. And, astonishingly, this species is the only known case of an endosymbiotic relationship between a photosynthetic microorganism and a vertebrate. It's actually been long known that there was some kind of association going on between the salamander species and a single-celled alga called Ophila ambistomatis, however the true extent of the symbiosis was, until relatively recently, unknown. Before the more recent discovery, it was thought that all that occurred was the spotted salamander laid its eggs in water, before the algae were then able to access the egg capsules surrounding the embryos. The salamander embryos would produce nitrogen-rich waste, which acted as a fertilizer for the algae, and in return the algae would increase how much oxygen was available in the water surrounding the embryos, as well as providing sugar to the developing salamander. However, there's much more to this story, as researchers studying these salamander embryos realised in 2010. While taking images of the young animals before they had hatched, it was found that many of the cells of the creatures actually contained algae within them, not just in the egg capsules around them. It was also observed that many mitochondria were actually gathered around the photosynthetic algae inside the salamander's cells, likely taking advantage of the oxygen and carbohydrates being produced by the Ophila, and using these products for the development of the embryo. Indeed, the salamanders do grow better when they have algae inside them, and so, technically, these are a kind of photosynthetic vertebrate, solar salamanders. But there have been some even more interesting developments in the research surrounding this symbiosis that have occurred in the years since it was first noticed. A 2017 paper sought to investigate whether the relationship between salamander and algae is a mutually beneficial one, similar to that of corals and algae, or if it is more parasitic in nature. Researchers therefore looked at changes in gene activity in both organisms during the period of time when they were endosymbiotic, and found that the algal cells are in fact very stressed, and deprived of oxygen and sulphur. The algae even change the way they make energy, switching from photosynthesizing to instead fermenting, as there is not enough oxygen for both organisms to be sustained on. The Ophila are literally fighting to survive in this strange new environment they've found themselves in. Fermentation is nowhere near as efficient at getting energy as respiration is, but it is a way to produce energy without the need for oxygen. Although, since this method is so inefficient, the algae cells end up using much of their stores of starch. Nevertheless, the algae do get some benefits from their living arrangement, since there's a lot of nitrogen and phosphorus being made inside the salamander cells, allowing the algae easier access to these materials. For the spotted salamanders though, this symbiosis is highly beneficial. The cells of these animals that contain Ophila algae showed no signs of stress, very different to their condition in their resident microorganisms. It was also discovered that the salamander cells increased their production of genes that suppress the immune responses activated against invading foreign particles, which is a similar occurrence to that in the animal cells of corals. This could quite possibly explain why the animal cells are able to accommodate the algal cells, instead of destroying them, as would be expected for most other animals. So, why do they allow the invasions? The salamanders likely benefit by getting their immune systems ready for later in life, without having them overstimulated, allowing for better protection against hostile attacks when they get older. Additionally, the embryos will get some nourishment from the fermenting algal cells, and, as I mentioned earlier, will generally grow better when they have algae within them. The 2017 study points out that the next line of inquiry is to figure out how the Ophila managed to get into the salamander cells in the first place, and hopefully future investigations will be able to solve this, providing more information on this remarkable instance of symbiosis. One final thing to consider though, it seems fairly clear why this arrangement works for the salamanders, but why do the algae put up with it? Though they get a bit of easy nitrogen and phosphorus, it hardly seems to make up for all the stressful discomfort they have to suffer. This is where the selfish gene hypothesis comes into play. 
If the algae are in fact passed on from parent to offspring salamander, as there is some evidence to suggest, namely traces of the algal DNA present in the oviducts and male reproductive tracts of adult spotted salamanders, then it seems entirely possible that the algae have a very easy way to survive and reproduce. Therefore, the genes contained within the Ophila algal cells would be very happy with the ease of how they are able to reproduce and be passed on, and the stressed lives the actual algae live would be a small price to pay for such guaranteed survival. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.